Hey guys, welcome to another video of mine. This is part 3 of the CSEC Technical Drawing Multiple Choice Questions. And I'll go through 10 questions. We've done 2 other sets so far. So let's go. Alright, so the first question says the spiral of Archimedes or the Archimedes spiral as you may know it as is defined as a a plane curve generated by a point on a taut cord as it is unwound from a perimeter of a polygon is it b the path generated by a point and this is all this is a Archimedes spiral if you did not know how it looks um, is it the path generated by a point which revolves uniformly about a pole and has a uniform motion away from it? Is it C, a plane curve generated by the path of a point on the perimeter of a wheel as the wheel travels on a straight track? Or is it D, the path generated by a point traveling in a place such as the difference of its distance from two Foki is constant and equal to the traveler's axis. So um, the answer would be B, and it is generated, it's a generated um, path from a point which goes around the pole. So let's say um, the center point of this circle is the pole, and it has a uniform motion away from the center. So as you can see, it is rotating about or revolving about the point however it's going away from the point also at a constant um, velocity okay so that is what you call the spiral of Archimedes and you might ask um, what is it used for what is the purpose of this and um, it was used way back in the day and it was a better way of determining the area of circles okay so when you had um, limited tools, you had to find um, different ways in order to find um, the areas of circles. So the spiral of Archimedes was one way to determine due to um, the velocity of uh, of the the spiral. Okay, All right, going away from the point, and the point, which is the pole, would be the center of the circle that they are trying to measure. Okay, All right, so the answer would be B. All right, 22, which of the following patterns can be folded to form a square prism with an oblique top? A square prism with an oblique top, okay? So right off the bat, you should know what a square prism is. An oblique, an oblique top would be an irregular top, which is um, not isometric, basically, okay? So it's not an isometric top. It has a different angle. Alright, so if you look at these options, um, we are looking basically for a square, something with a square base, okay? And this doesn't have a square base, this doesn't, so those two are out. Let me take, let me turn on the, there's a pointer, those two would be out. Um, this has a square bottom, however, um, you wouldn't get an oblique top out of this. And if you look at this one, however, and we will go towards it you're trying to get this oblique angle so basically all you have to do it's basically unfolded so from the unfolded to the folded top i will show you um how do you get it okay so once you have everything cut out you would fold the pieces and i have them color coded because um the base actually would not be seen so i did not color that the back of it which is behind this would not be seen however you would see the right side which would be here which would be red and as you can see it's turned the opposite way because it's folded out so remember when you turn it in it would be um the correct thing you have the top which would be this one and you have the front which would be here so if you follow the lines and you fold them together you should have that and then once you unfold them you should be able to put the the form together and this is what you would get okay so that would be the answer which of the following patterns can be folded to form a square prism with an oblique top 
and this would be your answer okay all right number three says the diagram above illustrates the construction of a dash and as you can see here it is two lines which are 90 degrees and you have an arc um joining um the two lines okay so is it a circle tangential to two converging lines is it a tangent from a point outside a given circle is it a circle tangential to two lines at right angles or is it a tangent to a circle at a point on its circumference so here you can see you have two lines that are at right angles this is a 90 degree 90 degrees so basically it has to be this one okay and then you have the circle which is tangential to both so the circle is barely touching um, this one and this one which is 90 degrees or at a right angle okay so the answer would be c or number three all right number 24 says the construction used in designing the bending jig this is a bending jig um, illustrated above was for obtaining a tangent joining two arcs which is a a common internal tangent tangent to two equal circles or a tangent from a point outside the circle okay so here you have two circles or two arcs which are part of a circle an arc is a part of a circle so if you go right around you will get a circle right here here you have a circle right here but this arc is smaller than this one so automatically it cannot be a tangent to two equal circles okay um is it a common internal tangent no because the tangents are on the outside of the um the arc and is it a tangent from a point outside the circle no because there's no point showing um any reference for the um the two arcs okay so the answer will have to be tangent joining two arcs and those two arcs are on equal circles okay so if you saw two unequal circles or two arcs then it would basically be the same thing okay so the answer would be a all right and here you have an example of a drawing which shows uh, the two circles and then the tangent um, joining the two arcs together okay all right Number, number 25, the point at which the bisectors of the angles of a triangle meet is the center of, so the point where you bisect angles. So remember we said ang bisecting angles is dividing angles into two. And if you have a triangle which has three angles and you bisected all of them, meaning you cut them in half, as you can see here, you would um, create a center point okay and that center point will allow you to draw an inscribed circle remember we have inscribed and ascribed circle the inside inscribed circle is a circle that remains inside of the triangle okay so the answer would be to create the inscribed circle okay so you find the points the center points by bisecting the three angles over here in order to get the center of the inscribed circle so the answer would be c okay all right this item um the type of projection illustrated above is called a dash and if you looked at the previous two videos i think you will know this answer and this is called an oblique drawing okay and there are two types of oblique drawings you have the tabular where all lines are drawn to the true length and you have the cabinet oblique where um, the receiving lines are shortened by a half okay and this is different to um, an isometric drawing which I have here as an option where the isometric drawing um, both sides there are no flat areas or horizontal areas um, one side is at an angle and the other side is at an angle usually 30 degrees okay so um, this is called a oblique projection okay so the answer would be a all right next one which of the following is true of the construction above and the answer would 
the B because the E, F, G, H, you're actually transferring the measurements over into a square, okay? And it doesn't have to be a square, but it is um, converted into a square and it shows that the areas of both are equal to each other. So if you have the um, bisection, you have the steps in order to um, convert EFGH into um, IFJK. Okay, so the answer would be B. Right. Okay, number 28, the ANSI or ANSI. BS, which is British Standards and ISO regulations used in technical drawing are referred to as A, local codes, B, building codes, C, regional standards, or D, interna international standards. And the answer would be um, international standards. Um, these are the standards that are uh, when you create any drawing for let's say a bridge or a building or a church or roads or anything that has to do that you have to um, uh, make or construct um, there are certain regulations that you have to abide and these were created a long long time ago and up to up to this day um, they are still uh, followed of course they will be changed over time but um, these are the regulations, the international regulations that you follow, okay? So, or the international standards that you follow. So the answer would be four or D. All right, 29, when sketching pictorial figures, one should first sketch circles, draw all straight lines, construct paths separately, or construct a box to hold a figure. So if you have a pictorial figure, it is a three-dimensional figure, and the best thing to do before you draw any three-dimensional figure is to construct a box to hold the figure and that would um, guide you along the way when you're um, constructing irregular um, pictorial figures it would just you would just be like a guideline in order for you to um, draw your figure proportionally or equally okay and 30, which of the following surfaces is developed in the shape of a T by unfolding or unrolling it? So in the question before, uh, we actually put an unfolded image together. And what they're asking is the opposite. Um, what 3D drawing um, do you have to unfold and would it cause, would it be in the shape of a T, okay? so. Here you have the drawing a 3d shape and this is a rectangular box with a top and here you have the 3d shape the t shape sorry not the 3d shape here you have the t shape unfolded from the um the rectangular box okay so um the others the square pyramid the triangular prism and the hexagonal truncated prism would not be in the shape of a t Okay, um, the answer would be, of course, C, a rectangular box with a lid, okay? All right, so I hope you understood those um, questions. Hit the like button if you did. Um, if you want to ask another question, leave a comment below. Share this video with your classmates or um, anyone who is interested. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next video, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.